I think one of the key findings and insights that is not really coming as a surprise to us is that risk in today's environment are hugely interconnected. They always touch you know, political, social, economical or real world events. So the interconnectivity I think is what is one of the key thrusts today that the world is facing. Yeah, the report as such provides huge value for us. It's a great source of information, which is somewhat the very sound foundation for our own risk assessments and our own risk strategies on one hand. On the other hand, it provides deep insights into, I think, risk situations of uh, other industries, uh, other countries, uh, other societies. So it's a really rich, rich source of information to us. take you know as an example of the dark side the London uh, riots where you know huge turmoil started you look for example to the economic crisis in which we are in it's full of interconnectivity it started 20 years ago with an interest rate that was kept by far too low and had huge ripple effects on the real economy on the financial economy and even on the society not only in the US and in Europe but worldwide. We got some early wake-up calls for example beginning of this year with WikiLeaks that clearly shows you nothing is really safe and secured and I think the dark side is highlighting this dimension of the interconnectivity. On the other hand you know maybe similar on another scale the bright side you look to the Arab Spring where some of the internet and the interconnectivity I think brought to the surface a huge democratization and a, huge, a lot of hope to a lot of people in the Middle East. I think a key challenge is that probably no single institution, no single government, no single body can really address the risk in a comprehensive way. What is needed today is really a collaboration on various levels. Governments need to work together with private public institutions, individual companies need to work together with public institutions to really address root causes of risks that we face today and hopefully that we can turn them also into an opportunity. An individual company cannot address, for example, the huge challenges and risk with supply chain and supply chain interruption. There only a collective effort is really needed. So first of all, I think people need to be aware uh, of the risk. There must be a deeper understanding, but we need then also to look to new forms of collaboration to address and then also to mitigate the risks and hopefully to turn them into opportunities. So I think the business community as such will play and has to play an enormous, enormous role. Let me give you two, three examples. Look, for example, how the automotive industry is really looking to the risk of air pollution and the revolution that has taken place in creating new engines and creating new types of vehicles. I think that's hugely transformative and you find other industries that can really address some of the key risks also highlighted in the Global Risk Report. And I'm highly confident when you look just to the sheer amount of wealth creation, the freedom that the world uh, is enjoying uh, today, that will continue. I think we need to address all those risks up front. We need to, not to be scared or feel intimidated. They always look huge to address, but I think with uh, efforts, with joint efforts, where I think, you know, uh, politicians, social institutions, economic institutions can work together, maybe joint forces also with academia. I think these are new patterns that will evolve to address the risks and hopefully turn them into solutions.